All right, welcome to Stand Up Memories. Here we have another episode. This and is you, the farthest I've ever gotten. You broke the rule <laughs> and you wrecked the show. We didn't even start We're not yet. allowed you wrecked to talk the show. So it's not my fault that the show's ruined. Friends, I always yell at Peter and everybody that I don't want to talk to the guests or even to Peter before the show because the best stuff is left in the green room or discussing when you haven't seen each other in a while. And it's always fun. So these guys got chatting and, of course, said some very, very funny stuff. So now, in a very phony way, Peter's <laughs> going to reintroduce what they were talking about. And it will we don't demonstrate have to. <laughs> how absurd it is that, that they, re not they, you were, will not include It's my you. fault. He you, wrecked it. He thinks we cannot recreate it. And we, we won't even try. We're just, we're just going to... Pick it up where well, we so left Why don't off. you talk about something? All right. Welcome. First why of all, don't you talk about something? The wink, guy? wink, wink. Completely different than that. Okay, I'll wink, wink. Talk about something completely different. But first of all, I'm Peter Bales. This is Jackie the Joke Man Martling. The podcast is Stand Up Memories. And this is our really, really cool guest. So happy to have him on here. He is comedian with a capital C, Richie Byrne. Thank you, boys. Nice. That. Now, don't you... Don't you have some kind of story that happened with you two? Nah, it's too late. Well, it's too late now. We talked <laughs> about it before the show started. Oh, we can't recreate that. So jerk. So it's not going to work. <laughs> I was about to ask you when you were talking about it, where such a place was. There was a, there was a gig, Sackett's Harbor. I'm getting Sackett's two Harbor. places confused. Alex Bay was past Sackett's. Okay. Okay. But I'm asking, where, is that Long Island? Is that upstate? It's is that upstate. Jersey? It's, it's on past the, Watertown. Yes. It's way, way on the lake. <laughs> it's what lake there. is it? It's Lake, uh, uh, lake, uh, 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 lake Ontario. Yes, Lake Ontario. Lake Ontario. The name yes. of the club was Lake Ontario Playhouse. Yes, and it's it's. That's, we're talking up the U.S. Up the U.S. Up. I was there <laughs> in the US. dead of winter, and what we were laughing about is it was so cold they had to cancel the ice festival. That's how cold it was. That is, that is how cold was it? That is so priceless. And <laughs> that is so But priceless. the fact is that up there, it's very tough in the winter, and the it's show cold. was the only thing going on, and so the audience was there, and they were just so terrific. Yeah. They really, really were. And uh, You're uh, not gonna say they came in just to get out of the cold. They came in just to get out of the cold, <laughs> and... Uh, it was, uh, and the two of you were working together. No, no, no. I, I don't. Wasn't I don't think show, he was. He I was did a show a, yeah. up there. Okay. And on my way up, I hit a snowstorm oh. that was epic. And, and ironically, it was in Mexico, New York, and uh, it was so bad that I, a van in front of me spun and was coming towards me. It was, and uh, I pulled off the exit and I called the club. I called Mike Kinney, the owner. I said, "I'm not gonna make it." I said, this is crazy, I can't. He goes, no, no, you're just in a snow belt. If you can get out of that, it's not even snowing here. And I go, I can't get out of this. And he said, I'm gonna come get you. I have four wheel drive, I'm gonna come get you. And he couldn't get off the exit. And I'm stuck in a truck stop waiting for him. And, and it is coming down, and finally now, he- What about the car that spun out in front I of you? Know, it just, I got around it. And I, was, and I even said, I go, I just saw a van spin, I'm done. Right, right, right. So he came to get me. He finally got to me. Show was at eight o'clock. He probably got to me about nine forty-five. <laughs> at and night. At night. And I'm and he got off the exit. I got in the car and I'm like, well, I guess the show's canceled. He goes, no, they're all waiting. <laughs> we didn't wow. get back until about twenty to eleven. The sh the show was supposed to be at eight. Not <laughs> one person left that comedy club oh, till. I and I had to go up my. I was completely <laughs> soaked. I so they're either change. huge comedy fans or they're frightened to death of the cold up there. <laughs> I, think this, I think it's that. So you were in a snow squall that lasted yeah. 100 miles or so. No, he was, no, it was literally about 15 miles. Once we got out of it, it was smooth sailing. Oh, so he was right. Yeah. You, you got out. And so they were ready for you. And we did, I did the show. And it was amazing. It was, cause I kept saying to him, I'm like, no one's going to be there. He's like, they're all going to be there. They're That's all gonna so be there. great. And they waited. 
Because it's, yeah. it's an isolated area, and that's what they have, and that's what they do, and they make it work, and yeah. it's so much fun. We love. Say the name of that town again. It was uh, Sackett's ha Harbor. Sackett's Harbor. It was about. Sackett's? Sackett's yeah. Harbor, man. It was a, a it was... scene of a battle in the War of 1812. Yes. Oh, that's, that's, right. Right. that's right, Peter. He's a history professor. That's because I'm a history world professor. No, Sackett's Harbor. Sackett's Harbor. What, what year was the War of 1812, by the way? <laughs> I think it was right before Vietnam. It was. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was. That's about... an easy question. Question. Even you could get that. Grant's tomb. Years. Grant's tomb. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Well, anyway, Sackets we have Harbor. Richie Byrne here, a terrific comedian, Long Island based, but New York area based, and he travels everywhere. And if you see Richie Byrne advertised, go to see that comedy show. How long have you been doing comedy? 35 now. 35 yeah. Yeah. years. Yeah. 35 yeah. years. It stings it, it, when it's way up it's in the so decades. It's so weird, yeah. When it's, it's in the decades. The only thing that makes me feel better is both of you were already established. When I, was <laughs> <laughs> I used to open for both of you. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's way way too, too long. Richie, Richie came up to me uh, way, way too long. after I did a show once and he said, you know, it's amazing that Herbert Hoover joke you do still works. <laughs> you know? And it does. So I'm keeping it in. Um, but you, your comedy is so based in your growing up and your family, yes. right? Is that what you started with? Yeah, I mean, I always, yeah, I think I did. I, I, th I think over the years it, I le left it and came back to it. But I th in the beginning, it was definitely my mom this. My did you grow that. up on Long Island? No, I grew up on Staten Island. Yeah, so, uh, but the first club I ever got up at was Minervini's Club here in Long Island. But and I that is the uh, first club on Long Island was called the East, East Side, Side Comedy, Comedy Club. Yeah. And yet that's where you did your first set. First time I ever did stand up was. Was the, it an open mic? It was night? open it was mic. It was Joan St. Ange. Joan St. Ange. Yeah. So this is the original East Side before they yes. moved. Before it was the original moved. East Side on Jericho Turnpike in Huntington. Joan St. Ange think, yeah. has been a guest yeah, on our show. Has she really? Oh, she she's has. an old friend. She's an old friend and she's a terrific actress now. Well, the reason. What happened was I, I have a degree in, in theater. I was, at, I was in a play. I was in a tour of a play. And one of the guys in the play would, I don't even remember his name. He would say to me, hey, man, you got to do stand-up. You should try stand-up. And he was the only one. And Joe, he said to me, I'm doing a play in Long Island called, I forget what play it was, with jo this woman, Joan. And she books the open mics. And I went out to see the play to meet Joan. And was the wow. play... It was at it, East Side. Yeah, it was at East Side. It was on a Sunday, and and I remember after the play, he came over, and I'm talking, and an improv group went up, and there was a guy in the improv group. I've told this story to him before. There's a guy in the improv group who just slayed me. I couldn't believe how funny this guy was. Was it the Laughter Company? I was the director of the it Laughter might, Company. I don't know, but it was, was Rob it? Bartlett. Oh, it was oh, Bart Rob Bartlett. Because I, I thought he was going to say Hawthorne. No, yeah, no, Rob it was Bartlett. Bartlett, and I said. Who the hell is that guy? Oh, he's amazing. And, this, and he goes, that's Rob Bartlett. He used to be with uh, Eddie Murphy and, and, and uh, Bob Nelson. Bob Nelson and all. I'm like, oh my God. And now he's like become one of my dearest friends. Which is, but at that time, I'm like, well, this guy's amazing. Yeah. For, the, if, for the people who might not know, Rob Bartlett was a, one of the sidekicks on the Don Imus show forever. Mm -hmm. And he's a Broadway actor, mm -hmm. an hysterical comic, an hysterical improv comic. And a great actor. And we're going to have him on the show and without, actually, without a doubt. He actually doubt. has a... Like a, uh, I don't know if it's a class or if it's a, a, a school for improv, but it's it's different. It's di I just saw it the other day. Well, we're going to have Rob Bartlett on, and we'll great ask guy. him. Great He's guy. He's a great guy, and so he inspired you. And yeah, he, and, and Joan set that up for me. She said, "Okay, come in this Sunday night or whatever it was," and I went in. And well, where did you get your jokes for your first show? Your absolute time, <sighs> first time you went on. Didn't I just you? had stupid jokes about being from Staten Island. Like, I remember uh, just dumb things. And I remember my best friend came, and uh, I had to do five minutes. And I did the five minutes in about a minute and a half. I was, you know, <laughs> now, were you living on Staten Island yeah, still at yeah. this point? And I remember my buddy after, I go, what'd you think? He goes, I have no idea. He said, <laughs> <laughs> no one could understand a word you were saying. You so <laughs> it was over. <laughs> but some people get so traumatized by their first time on stage, they never go on again. Yeah, yeah. But you were encouraged to go on again and do it again and again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it was the first three years I was busy doing theater a lot. So I would be in and out of comedy. And then... I think it was, uh, somebody said, hey, uh, you want to come on the road with me? I'll give you $50 to open. And I was like, 
Wow. <laughs> okay. Now, when you say theater, are you talking about local theater? No, no, I was doing t uh, a lot of uh, summer stock and a couple of tours. I have a background in musical theater, so I have a degree in musical theater. So I, that was always my goal. Was to, now, can to, you to do sing? That. You don't yeah. sing in your act. No, I used to. You you, did. I used to, and there was, a, and I, I'd love to bring it back, but there was a uh, a period where you were told, if you're singing, it's considered hacky, or it's considered this, or it's. And I was getting in the 90s, oh, don't do that singing, don't do that. And I dropped it. And, and now people are, you should sing. Like, it's amazing. You know, that whole thing. You Everything know, is so sick. Don't of sing, leave yeah. your guitar listen, home, yeah. leave your props Listen home. to yourself. Don't listen yeah. to I, Well, back then. Yeah, I know. I, now, I know. I'll do whatever the hell I want. You I guys mean, know. But you just yeah. opened up a whole thing. And I, I don't think I've ever asked anybody because I've never known who to ask. And I always mean to ask Sean, Summerstock. Hmm? You get paid for that. Mm -hmm. Is the pay mm -hmm. horrible it's or was it's it okay? It can be. It depends. If it's an equity theater, it's better. If it's non-equity, it's not. So I was young. I was 22, 23. So I was doing, you know, making, you, so I was you literally making show? about 150 to 300 dollars a week. Well, that's to, that's certainly money. Theater. Yeah. But are you doing a show for a week here and a week there, or is it the whole summer in one place? Everybody's I really different. Don't know. I did a I did a a week a, a summer in Pennsylvania. And it was a musical review. We did two musical reviews the whole summer. It was a steakhouse that had outdoor. It was beautiful. So we did, for a month and a half, we did the first musical re review while we rehearsed the second one. And then the sec second half of the summer, we did the second. But then I did a place in Maryland where every week we were doing a new play for the whole summer. So you were rehearsing all day and trying to learn your line. And at night you were doing So that's play. challenge. That's, that's spinning plates. That's, that's like doing the mash of theater. That's yeah, you know, I like love that's it. That's cool. I yeah. love it. That's I love cool. that. I loved it. It's now, like listen. being in a soap opera yes. in the old days. Yes. You know. Yeah. Everybody watching at home, wherever you're watching, look at Richie Byrne. You're not going to believe this, but he comes from an Irish Catholic family. <laughs> I know that's hard to believe. And... <laughs> You make your mom come alive in your act, and it's wonderful. Thank you. And how? And and is your mom still with us? Yes, she's yes. still with us. She's and still driving everybody crazy, man. Okay. My she's dad's in Staten dad's. Island. She's in Staten Island. She's the only one on Staten Island. The whole family, my, my brother, one brother's in Bayonne, another brother just moved to Tom's River. My brother moved to Tom's River, and my mother literally said, "I can't believe you're leaving me." <laughs> and he tried to get her to go with him with him and, so, and she's like, I have to stay here. So like, I can't believe you're leaving me. I'm like, <laughs> he's 50 years old. Ma. Let, him, uh, let him go. Wow. It's Tom's River. It's, so she, uh, yeah, she's driving everybody crazy. And you know, I, my whole act is about my mother. Well, a lot of it is. And it's so funny. And she's so real. And, you know, I hope she lives forever. But one day you may be doing your act as kind of uh, to honor her. Mm -hmm. to remember her life by, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, it's funny you say that, Peter, because I have a bit that I don't do a lot about my dad, who died eight years ago this last Wednesday. And the only time I do it is during this time, because it, Wednesday was the anniversary of his death. This Wednesday is the anniversary of his birth. He died a week before his birthday. So you break it out. And I do my whole act, and, like my and I, I have stuff about my father. And then at the end, I'll say, I've been lying to you people. My dad died. And you feel the air go out of the room. And then I go, I'd like to tell a couple of stories about him dying. That, and it, and I, pulls it, it back pulls up. it back up. It's amazing. I love doing it. And, and so far, it's always worked. And I, I always, whenever I do the bit, this is something that every comic should think about. I stay after because people want to come up and go, my grandmother died, and here's what happened. Everybody Everybody, relates. everybody has a story. Everybody and, relates. And I don't want them to feel like they want to tell you so badly. You but know? I think that for comics, you're honoring your... First of all, he's in your regular act, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's an honor to him. You're, you're, and I, whatever you believe in, your dad could be watching from up there and enjoying the laughs you're getting. Mm -hmm. I really, I or really he believe Or you could be that. heckling and you just can't hear him. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, but that no, Jackie, that, but Jackie's that. relationship with his parents is a little more complicated. <laughs> oh yeah, um, so he's heckling me right now. <laughs> but but I really tell comics that oh, I can't talk about my parents; they've passed. Yes, you can. Yeah. They would love yeah. it, 
and you make them come alive and, 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 and Here we go. Well, I'm just I don't know, Richie, if you know that Peter has a stand-up comedy uh, course that wait, he wait, wait. teaches. Wait, wait, wait. I wasn't leading into my comedy class. Stand-up university. Looking, That's what and I teach. comics, you can. You can speak about your stand -up parents. Standupuniversity.com. Check us out if you want to start out on stand-up comedy. But I didn't do that on purpose. No. No, I didn't. And I think it's, I think it's to work it in. I just love old married couples. <laughs> just, just, you know, just like the guy giving your colonoscopy happens to work in how much fun it was drinking that horrible stuff before the operation to make sure you say, yeah. And because one time I said, what stuff? And he turned me on and rolled me back out because <laughs> otherwise he'd still be cleaning himself off. <laughs> so Bales always works it. All right, standuniversity.com. It's not important. <laughs> All but right. he does it's have a, a point. Class, he does way. have a point. But you know? I do. I've been really, lucky enough to sit in on it. But oh, you're very. Oh, yes, you have. Yeah. You have come by and and, and, and uh, slung jokes with us. What a great way to put it. Right? Very good. And uh, but but you got to see Richie Byrne live uh, because he's so funny and his family is so real. And you have these brothers that drive you. Everybody in your family okay. drives you crazy. But these these are not fictitious. They, no, you know? no. No. Well, and no, you just actual. you go up and you seem to have a lot of fun on stage uh well I, you know and we all go on when we're not feeling well or we're tired and it's been a long drive but none of that you just go up and you're a, a big ball of fire and i was gonna i know comedians hate when i do this but you do things that i'm jealous about because i can't do them and things that i can't do are the sound effects, he does a bit about his brother's snoring with sound effects that I couldn't, yeah. it must be your theater training or I, I just, or you don't, I don't have the talent to do sound it, effects. Yeah, it he, was. Listen to his brother. But you mean sound effects that he makes, not pre-recorded. Yeah, no. Sound. no, no, it's. No. it's it, I it, haven't it, done that bit in a long time, but yeah. But, but what is it, what, so what did it sound well, like? Well, because I, my brother, snored i had to share a room with him on christmas one like years ago and then he has he had asthma to boot so he's snoring and wheezing and it, a lot of it's the mic so you're like <laughs> hey. and, you know and it really on the mic it'll you know i can't do that oh that's then, great I, that's right. great and then my son my other brother had a middle ear itch in the other room and that i don't know if you know what that is but like people oh, a middle ear itch is what i call it I, you get an itch behind your eardrum and you can't, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. And, 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 my, and people will like be like, <sighs> so that got into the, and I, it was a whole big, because I can't theoretically by I making it. By making that noise is supposed to. And it makes it it's worse. It's kind of like scratching yeah. it. Uh, and uh, other, people, other people go, <clears throat> can you hear that? <laughs> so yeah. that's all in, was all in the bit. A middle I, yeah. ear itch. And that's, that's what I called it. That's funny. You know, that's, that's what I called it. Uh, I, I don't know what. Oh, so terrible. you created the name for it? Yes, I did. Oh, yes, oh, I, did. Oh. I don't know if there is a name. There, well, it's, it's real. They're, the middle ear itch. If you have allergies, you know what I'm yes, talking about. It's well, annoying it, as hell. But it, it, I can't do sound effects like that. And, uh, you know, I'm a straight monologist. This, you, yeah. you do voices. Your mother is so real to me. Um, and what Richie Byrne does is he talks about things in his family and everybody relates to them. And you even say it in your act. Everybody has, mm -hmm. a, I think it's a grandmother. Like I do a thing about my oh, mother listen. dying. Oh, it's, is it your I, mother? My, mo my, mother? my mother just turned okay. 81. She's been dying for 36 years. You know? <laughs> and, and there's always somebody in the audience who will say, you know, my grandmother. Like it, but someone can right. relate to that. Right, right, you know? right, Whether, right. No matter what it is. You know? It used to be, I still put her in something, but I, I, my grandmother was the same way. So I do think about my mother and say she got it from her mother. But now... It, I'm a little I, old to be saying my grandma. I know, but we all know somebody who, yeah. when you were little, said, you know, the birth, the Christmas present or the birthday gift, you know, this might be. This is it. This is the last one. Yeah. You know, oh, you know. And then they live another 25 yeah, yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Everybody relates to the stuff in his act. I, I, was, I was at a Seder so long ago that I didn't know what it was. <laughs> and this Jewish girl I was going out with when I was way too old, I was like 28 and she was like 19 and her family was the exact family from Fiddler on the Roof, the three, right. the three sisters. <laughs> and she was the middle sister 
and the family hated me <laughs> and they, behind my back, but she told they <laughs> called me Peter Pan. But to me, that was the ultimate, ultimate compliment. Wow. I didn't want to grow up, you know, oh, because I'm, wow, I'm in wow, show wow. business and I'm having fun. And uh, this, and so it's such an uncomfortable situation. And I guess they go, I don't remember, but kind of going around the table, they each do a prayer or something. And then, and then they get to the little shriveled up grandmother. And she said that, she said, yeah, and blah, 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 blah. You know, that's, that's if I'm sitting here next year. <laughs> and it was just <laughs> like, you know, what do you do? You know, like, holy Christ, like, I'm surprised she didn't kick right then, you know. <laughs> but holy mackerel, you know. Yeah, no, my mother's been dying since she's 40. <laughs> so, Richie, Richie, you know. But she's still alive. Yeah. yeah she, Does she yeah, come she, to see your show? Uh, yeah, not a, she, a few years ago, I but did a show. But she has. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I did a show in Staten Island at the St. George Theater a few years ago. And it was a big deal because of my home and. It was really amazing to do that theater. I grew up going to that theater when I was a little kid and everything. Fantastic. Theater. And it was the biggest problem about who was going to take my mother to the show. Cause, you know, <laughs> who, and when I got up, the first thing I said, because most of the audience knew my mom, I got up, I go, uh, what was the hardest part about bringing the show together? Getting this beautiful theater? No. Getting it filled? No. No, the hardest part was who's going to bring my mother to the show, and everybody went crazy. <laughs> now this wasn't who gets and to bring her. No, she drew, it's and, who has to. And bring it's her. always the same. It's always like I don't know how I'll get there. Meanwhile, there's always somebody that gets there. <laughs> oh. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh. So listen, you love. I, it comes across when you're performing. You love comedy, and 99.9% .9 of the time it goes great. But mm -hmm. we love to ask comics on our podcast about the nightmare shows that we've all had that yeah. comics talk about at the diner yeah. because every night is, is great but but what cracks us up at two o'clock in the morning at the diner are you know when the fight broke out when the power went out every right. comic has a, right. a story about a show that oh my god and and if we don't have anything to talk about we just talk about the show that peter just did <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead well let me let I'm me tell you my jackie story i'm just being real. Oh, oh you got a jackie so, all right here we go I'm doing a college in Jersey, Ryder, maybe? I forget. Yeah. And he, I'm do, he's doing it. I'm opening for you. And this is back in the early 90s. And, and so this is New York. Oh, no, if it's early 90s, that's no, not New York. It's not Jerry Stanley, New York Tech. This no, is it's an Ryder actual, College. No, it was, an actual college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, the kid who booked it, I forget his name, but he was supposed to go first. And then he was going to bring me up and then Jackie. But and he goes, I got to go out there and... We get to the gig, and they're, they're literally chanting your name. In the, these, these kids are chanting, Jackie, Jackie. And I'm like, well, this is going to be rough. You know, it's going to be tough. Why don't I remember this? And the kid goes to go up, and I'm right behind him. And he goes, I'm going to go out. I'm just going to get him riled up, and then I'm going to bring you on. But he chokes, and he's got the mic. I remember he's got it. And he gets behind a speaker, and he goes... I'm right behind. I, he doesn't make it to the stage. He just gets too nervous. And he, he, from behind the speaker, you're in the other room. You don't even know this is going on. He goes, who'd you guys come to see? The place goes, Jackie. He goes, who'd you come to see? Jackie. Well, he won't be out till a little while, but we're going to boom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you son of a bitch. That sounds like Vinny Mazio Jr. Does that ring a bell? I think it was. <laughs> oh, my God, Jackie. The guy who set his head, hair on fire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he just hands me the mic. And I go oh. out. And I go, who'd you come to see? And they go, Jackie. I must have done it 12 times. Uh, By the end, they were like, Jackie. They were so tired. I go, well, you're going to have to listen to me for a little while. And they, uh, they love that. And I want them over. But I will never. I think it was oh, Vinny Mazio. Man, oh, my God. Man, man, man. What a great story. <laughs> I, I did a show with me and Richard Lewis were booked, I think it was Count Basie, Count Basie Theater by Vinnie Mazio Jr. Vinnie and Mazzio. his act was, he, I think he set his pubic hair on fire. Yeah, there was something. And <laughs> he went out there and he's setting himself on fire. And I'm, I'm hardly anybody, I'm just kind of getting a name, but this is Richard Lewis. Right. And he, he's looking at me like, what what are we doing here? You know, this is this is supposed to be a profession. This guy's and he didn't have it, it wasn't a trick. 
He lit himself on fire and then put it out. Oh my God. He lit his pubic hair on fire? I, I, I can't you remember. Know, I, have I, to, I have to remember. He lit something on fire. He lit something Do you remember on fire. Mr. Methane? Of course. He was he, on Howard a lot, he's right? He's famous. Buddy Fitzpatrick and I are up in Albany and Mr. Methane's opening for us. And he literally would fart smoke on the water. He uh, really, he really could that. was his act. That. He's, that was he's, his act. I think he's actually literally internationally this famous. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, like, like. Uh, <laughs> Buddy, and I, Buddy and I go to the owner of the club and we go, we're not using that mic. <laughs> <laughs> To I all the money. young people out there thinking about going into stand-up comedy, comedy is an honorable, respectable profession. <laughs> and you've just heard it from Richie Mr. and Methane. Jackie. Oh, man. That's oh, where great. did the time go? I'm getting signaled here. We really? have to have Richie Byrne back uh, on. Uh, absolutely. Oh, we barely scratched we the surface. We scratched the surface. And you guys are going to come on this. my podcast. Oh, yes. Now, yeah. tell everybody the name of your Drinks, podcast. Drinks, jokes, and storytelling. Myself and Mark Riccadonna, we've been doing it for about eight years now on and off, and, and we're running it out of governors right now. They're popular. Do you tape it or does it go out live? It's taped. We used to do live, but we're, we tape And it. we're going to go tape it next week. Yes. And we're going to have a lot of fun. Why uh, do I know the name Mark Riccadonna? Well, you've been on the show, I think, when we, during the uh, pandemic. I think you came on a few times. And Mark's a comic. Out of, uh, he used to run Stand Up New York. I don't know. I mean, I'm Mark sure Riccadonna is, is great. He's a great comic. I thought and maybe because like, he sounds like the name of a guy that was in one of those great rock and roll groups from way back when. Like well, that. no, no, no. And he doesn't <laughs> fart songs either. Well, now, <laughs> not on stage. Not on stage. <laughs> Mr. Methane. <laughs> Mr. Methane. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Stand Up Memories with terrific comedian Richie Byrne and Jackie the Joke Man Martling, and I am Peter Bales, and what fun, we're gonna do it again with Richie Byrne. Thank you for coming on. I'm looking forward to coming And we'll back. see you next time. Take care. That was a pretty good episode. A new episode every Wednesday with me, Peter Bales, Jackie the Joke Man Martling, comedians, interesting people. Leave a comment. We'll, we're gonna get, we'll get uh, what am I saying? I don't know. We're gonna get back to you. We will respond to your comment. Standupmemories.com, if you go there, it shows all the different oh, platforms. Oh, Spotify, we're on everything. Every Wednesday. Stand Up Memories. Every Wednesday. A new episode.